Greetings and welcome ladies and gents, I'm the Super Gamer, and well, since Crash Team Racing Nitro Field has come out, I thought what better time to not review Crash Team Racing, but rather review the final game in the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy, Crash Bandicoot Warped. With that said, this is Crash Bandicoot Warped. After the ending to the last game, where Crash and company blow up the Cortex Vortex, it comes crashing down to Earth and releases a powerful being known as Uka Uka, who is also coincidentally Aku Aku's brother. After berating Cortex for his failures, Uka Uka devises a plan to travel across time and collect the crystals to take over the world with the help of the Time Master himself, Nefarious Tropy. Or, Entropy. It is now up to Crash and Coco to travel through time and collect the crystals before Cortex and Uka Uka do. Plot-wise, the story for Crash 3 is a great step up from the last game. We're not just dealing with Cortex anymore, we're now dealing with a master of time and Aku Aku's powerful brother. So the stakes this time are quite high, and only the completely erect Bandicoot can stop them. Graphically speaking, Crash 3 is very similar to Crash 2, so there's not much to comment on here. Visually, however, since we're traveling through time, the game gives us plenty of unique time periods to explore. Some examples include medieval times, ancient China, the prehistoric age, the pirate era, exotic Arabia, the 1950s, and even the future! As a result, the art direction, although familiar, is still spot on for the third game in the series. You wanna know what else is spot on? The death animations. Since we're time traveling, the death animations do a good job showing the different ways Crash can die a horrible death. Wait, why is that a good thing? On top of that, the soundtrack is one of the best OSTs for a platformer I've ever heard. Again, with time travel, the music has to fit each time period while still being memorable to listen to, and it does that wonderfully. So yeah, for its time... HA! GET IT?! Crash 3 has some of the best music and art direction on the original PlayStation. If you haven't been paying attention at all to the last two Crash reviews I've done, here's a breakdown. As Crash Bandicoot, you jump and crash into boxes while also collecting crystal in each level. If you break all the boxes in a stage, you'll earn a gem. And each level has at least one gem, but quite a few of them have two. One for breaking all the boxes, and one for usually uncovering a secret route to it, including the death routes. The death routes can be achieved by reaching them without dying once. Once you do reach the death platform, the routes themselves are some of the trickiest platforming sections in the whole series. But you may end up finding one of the several colored gems needed to complete some stages. One of the bigger innovations in this game is the new power-ups you get after defeating a boss. The super belly flop, the double jump, the death tornado spin, and on top of that, the double jump death tornado spin, which is so much fun to pull off, and finally, the fruit bazooka, which is useful for taking out certain enemies or boxes. Now, you don't have to use them if you don't want to, but to me, having these power-ups here only makes the satisfying gameplay of Crash all the more satisfying. Seeing as how there are so many ways to break boxes and traverse the land, Crash 3 never feels boring as a result. The last power-up you unlock after beating the game are the Crash Dash Boots, which are used for Time Relic challenges. New to Crash 3, the Time Relics can be obtained by playing through a time trial version of the stage, where you must play through it in one go. Now if you thought that the death routes were too easy, these are what you're looking for. Going for the best relics on these stages can be absolutely brutal. But thankfully, they're not required in order to finish the game. However, collecting them will unlock some hidden levels if you are interested, and even then, you only need Sapphire Relics to unlock them. Finally, I can confidently say that Crash 3 has the best bosses in the entire trilogy. From the first boss to the last boss, every single one of them is challenging, all have patterns to dodge their attacks, and can even be kind of intense. Engine's boss battle might be my favorite for how crazy it can get. 
With that said, let's finally talk about the ending. Ah, spoiler alert! Crash is able to thwart Cortex's minion to collect all the crystals. Except he failed to realize from the last game that he basically has been hand-delivering them straight to Cortex. What follows is the final boss between Crash and Aku Aku against Cortex and Uka Uka. Now, unlike the piece of crap Cortex boss from Crash 2, Cortex here actually freaking fights you with a laser pistol and mines that he drops, all while you have to avoid the Mask Brothers fighting each other. It's a pretty decent conclusion to quite the great collection of bosses. If you had managed to collect all the gems, you'll get a secret ending where the time machine blows up, leaving Cortex and Entropy stuck as babies in a wasteland fighting over Uka Uka. Now that is a very satisfying secret ending indeed. So overall, I have no doubts in saying that Crash Bandicoot Warped is my favorite platformer on the original PlayStation. It takes what I loved about the second game and makes it even better with all new power-ups and all new things to collect. That It's just, it's great. It's a great game, man. It's great. And with that said, I'm going to give Crash Bandicoot Warped a 5 out of 5. Until then, I'm the Super Gamer, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye